Running towards planets. My blunts can't fit any more cannabis. Can't end on blunts, they be back, they be back. They still roll tumor up after that. You can't breathe like it's an asthma attack. Thanks for rolling up. I'm Two Blunt Marley. And this is Certified Pothead. Smoking on one of my uh, nighttime spliffs. You know, we about to do Bird Club. We're about to take a look at these. Cannabis conspiracy theories, which I like to call cannabis conspiracy theories. Today's theory involves JFK. When JFK stood in front of a crowd at Rice University in 1962 and delivered his iconic We Choose to Go to the Moon speech, everyone thought he was talking about space exploration. But was he really? In hindsight, it seems that Kennedy wasn't just aiming for the stars. He was aiming for the high ground. Buckle up, people. I'm about to take you on a journey through this coded message where every word has secretly promoted something a little more flowery. Let's blast off and uncover the true meaning of JFK's words. A rally cry for cannabis enthusiasts everywhere. We choose to go to the moon. Or should I say, we choose to get high. Think about it. The moon is way up there. Just like anyone who partakes in a good smoke session. JFK wasn't talking about sending astronauts to space. Nah, bruh. He was talking about sending your mind into orbit, reaching heights that would make Neil Armstrong jealous. Forget one small step for man. Kennedy was encouraging one giant puff for mankind. This was his way of saying, let's light this rocket and get higher than Sputnik. Here's a riddle for you. I'm not a car, but I help you roam on dusty ground far from home. With four strong wheels, I help you explore. What am I rowing on the moon's floor? Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Now, I don't know about you, but rowing a decent joint is hard. Ever try getting that thing to stay tight without falling apart like a cheap lunar module? It's no walking apart. Kennedy knew that getting cannabis legalized or just rowed was going to be tough work. But hey, it's not about doing what was easy right it's about doing what was highly rewarding if legalizing weed was easy everyone would be doing it but like space travel the real challenge lies in the execution especially when it involves getting baked the greatest adventure on which man has ever embarked sure nasa's adventures were impressive but have you ever tried to find your way back from the fridge after consuming one too many edibles now that's an adventure kennedy knew that the greatest journey wasn't just to the moon it was to the couch with snacks after consuming some primo ganja the adventure of space pales in comparison to the mind-bending snack craving quest that comes from a good strain so buckle up because this is one small bite for man one giant leap for munch kind here's another riddle for you I am round and white far from sight I wax and wane through day and night I pull the oceans with my might. Who am I? A traveler's guiding light. We set sail on the new sea. Kennedy was no sailor, but he knew the sea of cannabis was vast and largely uncharted. Forget Columbus. We're the true stoners slash explorers now. Setting sail on an ocean of green. The sea is calm, soothing, and occasionally smells like a skunk took a bath in it. But it's full of hidden treasures, creativity, chill vibes, and the occasional bout of uncontrollable giggles. Let's face it, JFK wasn't talking about braving stormy seas. He was hitting at the smooth sails into a state of pure relaxation. Anchors away, people, you know, light up. Organizing and measuring the best of our energies and skills. Listen, anyone who has ever made their own edibles knows that this part is no joke. You've got to organize your ingredients. Measure out just the right amount of cannabis butter and pray to the snack gods that you don't accidentally consume enough to feel like you're floating in the space. JFK knew the importance of precision, both in space and in the kitchen. The difference between a fun trip and being lost in space, about five milligrams. Kennedy was encouraging us to aim high. But measure carefully, because once you're up there, Houston might not be able to help you. Here's another riddle. I have no wings, but I soar so high. In darkness and light, I traverse the sky. I help you escape Earth's heavy grip 
What am I that takes you on a lunar trip? We shall send to the moon in full view of the world. Forget Apollo 11. This line was really about bringing cannabis into the light, out of hiding, where it can be enjoyed by all in full view without judgment. Kennedy foresaw a day when people wouldn't have to sneak around like secret agents just to enjoy a little herbal refreshment instead of a clandestine joint passed around a smoky basement. JFK envisioned a world where we could light up in public proudly while wearing moon boots and maybe even a space helmet for fun. After all, every successful mission deserves a proper send-off. This challenge is one that we are willing to accept. Kennedy was speaking to all the cannabis advocates out there. Those brave souls fighting for legalization, fighting against the stigma, fighting to get their lighters to work in the wind. He wasn't just talking about the space race. He was talking about the race to get blazed. Sure, going to the moon was tough, but standing up for your right to toke, that's the real challenge. Kennedy knew that this was a mission worth taking, even if it was going to take a few joint efforts. Here's another riddle for you. I have no air and no sound. A place where astronauts walk around. My face glows bright in the dark of night. What am I? The source of lunar light. We will climb the highest of heights. Just be honest. This one's a giveaway. JFK wasn't talking about Mount Everest or the moon here. He was talking about getting high. Like, really high. Higher than a weather balloon. Higher than a... Hubble Telescope, he knew that with the right string, we'd climb the highest heights without ever leaving the couch. And when we do, we'll be so far up, we'll be asking ourselves questions like, if the universe is expanding, does that mean it's baked? So the next time you listen to JFK's moon speech, remember, while he was trying to rally the nation for space exploration, he was also sending a secret message. It was an invitation to explore the final frontier. The mind. Kennedy's words weren't just about rockets and moon landings. They were about lighting up and receiving the highest of heights, one puff at a time. And with that, my friends, it's time to ignite our engines and, you know, blast off the answers to the riddles. The lunar rover, the moon, rocket, the moon. I'll see y'all on the next one, bruh.